What? No, there's a number. There's a number on the bill. That's how you know what, what bill it is. We've got a little more variety. All of your bills have an old lady on them. And that's just, <laughs> and that's just creepy. And, and she just keeps getting older every couple of years is the thing. I mean, what's up with that is my question. Different show. You can't, jo oh, this is great. John can't reply, so I can say things, and he's stuck. Hi, so we, you missed it. I, I was mocking John again. Uh, John's my friend. He's a floor director. Um, John tells me that the episodes of Keith Explains he enjoys most are the ones where I make fun of him. So I try to make fun of John on my show all I can because, really, he's probably my only viewer. Um, we, were, we were looking at this Ustream... We also broadcast on Ustream, keithexplains.com slash Ustream, first Thursday of every month, now-ish. And by now-ish, I mean around 9 o'clock on the first Thursday, uh, Pacific Standard Time, uh, the only useful time. I guess it's Pacific Daylight Time, really, isn't it? Yeah, Pacific Daylight Time. But you're, no one's going to watch it because on our Ustream channel, there's a little, a little chat thing next to it. And every time we start broadcasting, like six people pop into the, sh the channel instantly and start talking about the show. And they don't make a darn bit of sense because they, they say things like, this is the best show ever. And I've seen the show. It's, it's not the best show ever. It's, it's not even, this would not make any list of the best shows ever, unless it was a very, very restrictive list. I mean, I've... I mentioned before I've taken first place in the hometowns in the shows called Keith Explains category. Um, it was a squeaker between me and 30 minutes of static, but I managed to pull it out uh, because I sent a 20 along with each entry for them. Um, speaking of that, I, I have this Access TV show, and so like twice a year I get you know, nice glossy emails telling me I should enter my show in these random awards that I've never heard of. And every award, like when you enter, it's like $400 to enter. And I'm like, $400? Man, this award must be really skanky. Because if I send you $400, you'll tell me I won an award for something. And I'm like, well, I mean, sure, I'd spend 400 bucks, but I'd get a nice trophy I could put on the wall. And I'm like... Well, I could just buy a trophy <laughs> for less than $400. I, I wonder what a trophy costs. It's like 30 bucks. So I'm, I'm here tonight announcing the Keith Explains Video Awards program. Uh, if you have a television show, or if you don't, but are thinking of having a television show, or if you just have more money than cents, what you need to do is send me the money, preferably multiples of 500 and I will send you an award certificate. It'll be a piece of paper. I'll get one of them gold seal stickers. <laughs> and I will give you an award for something. Uh, if you send me more than $500, two awards. <laughs> uh, if you send me a billion dollars, you're the big winner, is all I'm saying. Uh, anyway, uh, big, big show tonight. Actually, I'm totally lying about that. I... I only wrote three pages in notes because I never seem to get to them. And then after I'm done with the show, I take all my notes home and I throw them on my computer desk. And like with all the papers in my life, they just pile up. And about every nine months, I think, man, I should clean my desk off. Otherwise, it's going to collapse under the weight of all that paper. And then I spend a month cleaning my desk off and I, I get all these sheets. And so I have, I have like a stack this high of old show sheets. And every time after the show, I think I should save this because I... I didn't get to most of these, and so that way I can just use them next month. But I leaf through them at home. I have no idea what I was thinking when I wrote them. There are some that I don't think are even in English. They're like in some <laughs> other language that I used to know, but I've forgotten it, and then I've forgotten that I used to know it. Like, it's entirely possible I used to know French and have just totally, just in the entire, because I don't know what some of the, okay, a bunch of, you know, three shows today, but First, I'm going to talk about this. Uh, we tape at KMVT 15 in Mountain View. Uh, and during the summer, they have summer camp for kids. 
uh, and they do this like Play-Doh animating thing, and they do, would you like to have a TV show thing? Uh, and here, here they have a little printout that I found. Now it's it's torn, so that makes it more authentic. Uh, and it's the summer camp rules. If you are here for summer camp, now first of all, this isn't a camp because there are no sleeping bags. Camps require sleeping bags. If there are no sleeping bags, it's just a place your parents leave you during the day because they don't love you as much as you think they are. <laughs> uh, anyway, summer camp rules. First rule, campers are required to follow all directions given by camp staff. Okay, Campers are things with wheels that you buy. Okay? You can't call little children campers. You would call them something like attendees or... Maybe you'd make up a cute little name for them, like, you know, third graders would be muskrats or something. But you can't just say campers, because, again, this isn't a camp. Uh, required to follow all directions given by the camp staff. That's crazy. I mean, camp staff could be crazy. I know the people that work here, and you don't want to follow some of their directions. They're, <laughs> they're not right in the head occasionally. Uh, campers cannot leave an area without a staff member's permission. There's no definition of area. Like, I... I, I could do anything I wanted and claim I was still in an area. Uh, fighting or horseplay, and then they have a parenthesis, so they describe it. Hitting, biting, pushing, shoving, striking down another child will not be allowed. There could be a lot more things in that list. Like, <laughs> like punching, right? There's no punching in there. There's pushing. But punching is harder than pushing. Uh, inappropriate language is unacceptable. But what is inappropriate? Um, for example, if I've taught, you know, let's say a five-year-old to say bacon or sausage to any question asked, just, would you like to go here? Sausage. <laughs> okay. That's, after about ten minutes of that, any adult is driven stark raving mad. Uh, that's why I teach it to the five-year-old. Uh, but see, that's inappropriate language, right? Like, you shouldn't, be sausage, you shouldn't be saying sausage when I ask you a reasonable question. It's inappropriate. Uh, vandalism will not be tolerated. Uh, I think that's true. Uh, cell phones are prohibited and should not be used at camp. Uh, then there's walk indoors at all times, which when I read that, I think that means you have to be walking all the time, <laughs> which I think is going to make it hard to do the claymation animation because that <laughs> you, you would have to be walking around constantly just reaching over it. <laughs> Uh, no yelling or running in the hallways. That, again, if you're walking at all times, you can't be running. Um, and then I didn't read what was on this side. Oh, wow, look, it's, I think it's song names. No, no, it's not. Who the heck knows? And then back here, there's... Ooh, that's filthy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, big, big show tonight. Uh, first thing. Uh, for me, it's July, so... It's probably December for you. Um, I hope things still exist, because near as I can tell, huh, in some sense, the economy is going to crumble because we're going to hit the debt limit. And so I expect anarchy, and we'll all be living in caves. But if your cave still gets cable television, thanks for watching. Um, <laughs> Loretta and I just went and saw this play up in San Francisco. It's gone by now, because I think it's only there for like a month, called Billy Elliot, uh, which... I guess, is a play based on a movie, which is the wrong direction, right? It should be, first you make the play, then maybe you make the movie. And, and then I found out, not only is the play based on the movie, but they did a book after the movie, which again is also the wrong direction. First you should do a book, which actually fleshes out the entire story. Then maybe you can do a play, which summarizes the interesting parts of the book, musically, of course because people break out into song all the time and love to dance. And then you do a movie where you hire big Hollywood stars. Uh, in this case, they had no big Hollywood stars, and then there was a musical. So it was really confusing for me. Um, now, we drove up and saw it, and since my parents are in town, we stopped in San Carlos, and we, we had dinner with my brother before going to the play at this, at this kind of hole-in-the-wall restaurant. And I mention this because apparently while I was there, they, they gave me a roofie. Uh, now, I didn't know it at the time, but 
I began to suspect when I saw this play, Billy Elliot, the heartwarming story of like a little 10-year-old in northern England who is going through incredible strife in his life because the whole town is, there's this coal miner strike, yada, 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 bad, bad, bad. Uh, but the curtain went up and Billy Elliot came out and Billy Elliot was a, a tall adolescent Asian boy who was the child of two not at all Asian English people. And, and he somehow had an English accent. And I was like, this doesn't seem... Now, I know for real why you have this problem, which is there are only like 15, 12-year-olds in this country that can dance and sing. And so when you hold your open curtain call auditions, you get them all. And since they're 12, you know, you can't have them in your play every day. So you got to have like six kids and you got to rotate through them so they can go to school and not work too long. But... It is really jarring, unless, of course, you've been given a roofie, to see a, a tall, very good dancing, very good singing with an English accent Asian person pretending to be from Northern England with a Northern English accent. <laughs> <sighs> and, and then midway through the play, uh, I knew I had been given a roofie because... Billy Elliot went to his friend's house and his friend, another eight-year-old, was cross-dressing. And then they had this big musical number where they put on dresses. And then huge dresses started dancing around the stage. And a disco ball came down and I was like, man, I'm so high right now. <laughs> I don't know what they gave me, but this is, man, it's really, really intricate. Uh, and then it started to wear off because by the end of the play, again, I was depressed. Because bad things happen to people. <sighs> and he's dancing, dancing. It makes me vaguely want to see the movie to see if there was more in the movie than they managed to fit into the musical. Uh, and I was like, well, you could read the book. And I'm like, well, how much more could they have gotten out of this play for the book? Again, books should be long. Billy Elliot. Uh, you won't go see it because it'll be gone by now. But, you know, if you had... Uh, it'd be just like taking a roofie, I think. I've never taken a roofie. Don't mail them to me. I'm not going to take stuff you get in. People have tried this before. Like, I've gone out to my... As you know, I buy a lot of stuff on the Internet. Uh, and as you know, I have a bad memory. So I will get home, and there'll be a box at my front door addressed to me, and I'll be like, ooh, box. And then I'll take it inside, and I'll open it up, and be like, ooh, oh, yeah, I remember ordering that. Occasionally, I'll get a box, and I'll open it up, and I won't remember ordering it. I'm like, well, they say the memory is the first thing to go, and I am approaching my, I'm approaching my 45th birthday, and so it's, all, it's been downhill for a while. But I think 45 is the serious, the serious, you know, the Olympic part of the, the, the ski ride into death. <laughs> so, you know, I got that going for me now. Uh, and then occasionally people will be like, hey, did you get that thing I ordered you? And I'm like, what was it? And then they'll name something. I'll go like, oh, yeah, I thought I ordered it and just forgot about it. And then they're like, oh, no, I sent it to you for your birthday. And I'll be like, oh, well, then thank you. And then I'm all depressed because I'm like, man, that was great. I thought I needed that. And then, no. <sighs> people, have been write, people have been writing in after the last couple shows, which you haven't even seen yet. So I don't know how you do this. Maybe you're one of those six people watching on the Internet. I doubt it. They would say, hey, Keith, how's the rodent relocation going? Uh, now, again, as you know, we in our backyard had a rat problem. <laughs> uh, and I know we had a rat problem because I was sitting in my living room, and I looked in my backyard, and, there were, and it was covered with rats. Uh, it was just, there was like 10 rats out there. And I was like, where did 10 rats come from? <laughs> and there I was like, did you pay attention in school? First the mommy rat and the daddy rat <laughs> go on a couple dates, and then the mommy rat and the daddy rat have a very special hug. Uh, and then the baby rats come, and the mommy and the daddy rat love each baby rat differently, but all the same. And then the then the baby, and I'm like, oh, I wasn't asking that. I was, yeah, I guess I was asking that, wasn't I? So anyway, we, 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 like I looked out, and there were like ten rats out there. And I was like, whoa, where, okay, I did that part. So then we were like, well, what should we do? Now, most people, upon hitting the situation, would go, 
we got to get rid of those rats. <laughs> and then they'd call an exterminator. And we were kind of like, we got to get rid of those rats. Okay, we'll go buy a bunch of rat cages. And so, like, my backyard has, like, three or four of these, these live catch rat cages right now. And we're, we're, like, put rat food in them, and then we, like, catch rats. And we bought a, we bought a cage to keep the rats in before we relocate them. Far away from where anyone lives. And, and we give them a little, a little stick with, you know, a bindle. It has some food and a blanket and a phone number in case they have to call home. Uh, and for God's sakes, we don't release them in any parks around here, which would attract the attention of any park rangers. If you're a park ranger, turn your TV off for like a minute. Okay, we do. We, we, we take them out to like, like Santa Cla Stevens Creek Reservoir somewhere far away. Okay, and we let them go. And it's okay because rats live there now. Okay, now I've got to wait for the, 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 the park rangers to come back because I need all the audience I can get. <laughs> okay, anyway, so like we, so we're, we're, we're down 18, well, we're not down 18 rats, right? I mean, the rats are still somewhere. They're just not living in my backyard anymore. We've actually reached the part where a couple days go by that we don't see a rat. And then I'll say to like Loretta, hey, maybe all the rats are gone. And then like the next day we'll get a rat. So now... I don't say, hey, maybe all the rats are gone. Because apparently every time I say that, it attracts rats. Is all I'm saying. Uh, rat relocation, well in progress. Um, <sighs> something else. Uh, you may notice I don't have a watch on. I haven't had a watch on for like two or three weeks. Which, which is probably like two or three weeks for, forever. Because I remember having a watch when I was in like eighth grade. And so like... For all of my adult life, I've had a watch on. And, and I always thought to myself, hey, I have a really good sense of time. Because people would ask me, hey, what time is it, Keith? And I'd go, ah, it's probably 5.10. And then I'd look at my watch. It'd be like 5.08. And I'd be like, I have a great sense of time. I'm, you know, accurate to within two or three minutes. Apparently, it's only because I always had a watch on. Because right now, <laughs> I, have, I have no idea what time it is. See, I, I had a watch. And I had a, you know, I bought a really nice watch that had all these swoopy displays and everything. And then it stopped working. And then I, I had my backup watch. And I put my backup watch on. And it doesn't work at all. Unless it's 2.45. <laughs> if it's 2.45, the backup watch is great. But it's only 2.45 once a day. I know you're going to go, it's 2.45 twice a day. No, I'm sleeping that other time. <laughs> it's totally useless to me. It's only 2.45 once a day in any useful way. So I decided not to wear the backup watch. So I have, I, I did order a replacement watch, which is coming, uh, which apparently is going to have clone troopers on it. So bully to me is a backup watch, and i got to get my real watch fixed. But apparently what it has told me is I have no idea how long anything in the world takes. Because I'll be in my office, people will go, hey, Keith, do you want lunch? And I'm like, yeah, maybe in half an hour. And they'll be like, it's 1 o'clock. <laughs> I'm like, ew. That's why I'm ravenously hungry. It's 1 o'clock. And the scary thing is the, the times on the computer, of course, but I never look at it. Um, when I was young, when I was in high school, as you know, I had a calculator watch. Like with buttons. Like I had a watch where I could push buttons and do math. And then I was thinking, man, I should buy a calculator watch again. And then I'm like, I'm... Well, okay, I am still that big of a geek. But I... I don't want to admit it anymore. <laughs> See, when I was in high school and wore a calculator watch, everyone there knew I was a huge calculator watch wearing geek. And I don't recall really using the calculator much because the buttons were so tiny it was hard to press. And as it turns out, I didn't need to do a lot of math when I was just sitting around with my watch. And if I did, I had a big calculator that worked. So I decided not to buy a calculator watch, although I did consider it. So... Anyone that had that on the bingo card, you do get a point. <sighs> Something else I've noticed a lot lately. Um, as you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, a shoe experimentalist. Uh, I'm on the cutting edge of shoes. You know, I... These are tennis shoes. They're boring, but, you know, I do have them. Uh, when they came out with adult shoes with wheels, I bought them. No one else bought them. Camera three, 
You're so confusing. A minute ago you said camera two. <laughs> yeah, that's camera two. That's camera three. It doesn't make any sense. Again, I, I am the star here, right? I am the center of the universe. We know that all the cameras are pointed to me. They should be one, two, three, but they're not. They're three, two, one, which indicates to me that you people don't think I'm the most important person here. You think... Okay, yeah, perhaps, yeah, I guess that does make sense now that I think about it. <sighs> camera one, or camera three, you want me to look at that camera? The one with the red light on it. Man, I'm a genius. I'm, I'm vaguely smart. I'm, I can be taught, I can be taught. Maybe let's, let's leave it at that. <sighs> I was talking about shoes, remember? Remember a couple years ago I had the shoes with wheels in them? The adult shoes with wheels in them? And I could roll around on them? And I could nearly kill myself on them. And occasionally, like when I was in a place with big flat floors, I could actually roll on them successfully. But most of the time, where the floors aren't nice and wood and big, uh, I could mostly occasionally roll a little bit before nearly killing myself on them. Okay? I think if you were to say, hey, what's Keith's shoe comfort level? You would say Keith is experimental with shoes. Uh, I've noticed lately there are people wearing shoes that have individual toes in them. Like little, like you get to the end of the shoe, okay, and instead of it being round, right, there are like five little pockets. There's a pocket for each toe, and each pocket is appropriately sized. Like the big toe pocket is huge, and the little toe pocket very tiny. And if you look at them, like if you look down the front, like each little toe has little grippy things in the bottom of it. Like they're like... If you see them, you're like, that guy has really ungodly dirty feet. But they're not. They're just black shoes with individual little toes, okay? This has to stop, okay? <laughs> toes are not individuals. <laughs> toes are a collective, okay? We don't even have names for all of our toes, okay? Okay? We, got, we have at least plausible names for all five toes fingers, right? And I know one of them's a thumb, okay? Don't give me that crap, okay? Right? There's the thumb, and there's the index finger, because I guess when you're flipping through index files, you would use it. Uh, and then there's the middle finger. Again, it's, again, people say the thumb's not a finger, okay? But if this is the middle finger, the only way that's the middle finger is if the thumb's a finger. Okay? <laughs> okay? This, this is called the ring finger. Except girls wear rings on all of them, so I don't know. And this is the pinky, okay? And I guess it's because it's shorter, although it's not very much shorter. But this is the pinky. Anyway, we got a name for it, right? Now, now toes. Do the same thing with your toes. Okay, we got the big toe. We all know about that one. And then we got the little toe. We know about that one. There's nothing for the three in the middle. Like you, <laughs> there's nothing, okay? Toes do not want to be individual. Toes want to be in one big roomy space. And they want to be able to rub up against each other and get all sweaty together, okay? <laughs> it's got to be stopped. It's got to be stopped, okay? Parents, do not buy these for your children. Children, if your parents buy them, call CPS, okay? I mean, technically, it's not abuse, but something's got to be done, okay? Toes, shoes, it's a plot. It's a communist plot of some kind. <sighs> Okay, here's something I was thinking recently. Um, as you know, uh, one of the alternate titles for this show was Keith Lies. Because uh, for some reason, people think I lie a lot. Now, that's not true. Okay? And see there, there, I just lied to you. See? You're a perfectly straight face, right? I said something, flat out lie. I knew it was a flat out lie when I said it. I purposely said it because it was a flat out lie, and you believed me. People say, Keith, how do you get so good at lying on television? I think it all goes back to my dentist. Uh, now, as you know, I go see my dentist twice a year. Uh, he's a nice guy. Uh, he doesn't watch this show. Uh, and if you are my dentist and you're watching the show, turn it off right now. <laughs> For like three minutes. Okay? Three minutes. Turn it off. I'm trusting you. You're, you'll do it. Okay, now he's gone. So I can tell you, like, every time I go see my dentist... He says, do you floss? <laughs> okay? And every time I say, yes. He says, how often? And I say, oh, probably five, six times a week. Okay? 
I do not floss five or six times a week. No one flosses five or six times a week, okay? <laughs> they make they make a hundred things of dental floss a year. Maybe two hundred. Okay, and then and that's it in the whole country, okay? People do not floss. Um, and and everyone lies to their dentist about it. Now, you're supposed to floss, it's good for your teeth, yada yada yada. And and after they ask the flossing question, then they do this pokey thingy with a stick. <laughs> Where they go around your whole mouth and they poke every tooth with a stick and then they write down a number. Number, 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 number. Okay? And I'm threes, okay? Every time we do the dentist thing, it's all threes. It's like three, 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 four, two, three. Right? And then he gives and he's like, oh well, you're pretty much the same as last time. You should be sure to floss so that you stay where you are. And I'm like, oh, I'll keep flossing. Okay? <laughs> now I, I felt bad about lying to my dentist because I thought he's a nice guy. Why am I lying to him? So after I went in and saw him once, I was like, I should actually try to floss. So I spent six months flossing, <laughs> religiously. Every day I flossed, okay? If I got in my car and was backing out of the driveway on my way to work and I didn't remember flossing, I would pull my car back in and I would go back upstairs and floss. That's how much I cared about trying to floss. And at the end of those six months, I went and saw my dentist. And he said, do you floss? And I said... Yeah, he said, how often? I said, well, five or six days a week, okay? Now, I was telling the truth, okay? But it came out exactly the same as when I was lying to him. So I, <laughs> whatever, okay? And then he did the pokey thingy, pokey, 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 okay? Threes, couple fours, okay? You can floss all you want, okay? It's not going to do you a darn bit of thing. I don't know, I, I, I got to assume dentists own floss companies, but I'm like, there, there can't be that much money in floss, but they're trying to create a market or something, right? Because, okay, it's been three minutes. How much time is left? Okay, good. It's been three minutes. My dentist is back. Ha, ha, ha. That was a great story. Everyone loves my dentist. Um, okay, I only got a minute left. Uh, okay, here's something else. Uh, I have Maureen's my sister-in-law. Blah blah wine tasting. Uh, I think she's in Missouri wine tasting because she goes wine tasting everywhere she goes. Uh, and I was talking with her a couple weeks ago about wine tasting, and and then it occurred to me we don't have other tastings really. Like like you go to Campbell to have olive oil tasting. That's weird, but there's no like peanut tasting. Like you can't go somewhere and try different varieties of peanuts or uh, ice cream sandwich tasting. That would be fabulous, right? <laughs> like if there were an area of the country that made ice cream sandwiches and you could just try all the different, oh, this is vanilla with uh, chocolate chips and extra crispy. Okay, I, I, look, I'm out of time. And I didn't, I still didn't get through three freaking cars. <sighs> title company, see, I was gonna explain title company. Because someone said, Keith, what does a title company do? And I said, they take your money for doing the government's job. Right? Because you're like, I would like to buy this house. And they're like, okay, give us $120. And I'm like, what is this buying? And they're like, oh, we're letting you know that you're buying the house. And I'm like, I do that. I came here and said I want to buy the house. But oh, we, we make sure no one else owns it. And I'm like, does the government have it? Yeah, this book, this number.